President Alasa Dishuja decree granting amnesty for the crimes committed before the 23rd of this month. Syria calls on the world community to deal seriously with the French rule which encourages terrorism. Armed forces continue their pursuit of terrorist groups, killing dozens of them in a number of provinces. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad today issued Legislative Decree No. 71 of 2012 granting general amnesty for the crimes committed before October 23, 2012. The decree replaces death penalty with a life sentence of hard labor or detention for life according to the crime committed. It also replaces a life sentence of hard labor with 20 years of hard labor imprisonment and a life sentence of detention with a sentence of 20 years of imprisonment. The Foreign and Expatriates Ministry has called on the world community, particularly the UN Security Council, to deal with absolute seriousness with the French rule, which hinders the halt of violence and terrorism in Syria, and encourages the terrorists to go on with their massacres against innocent civilians, including the terrorist attacks that took place in Baptuma and Damascus last Sunday and claimed the lives of 13 Syrian citizens, mostly women and children. In a statement today, the Foreign and Expatriates Ministry said the continuation of this French policy threatens peace and security in Syria, the region and the world, at a time when the UN earnestly works through its special envoy to find a peaceful solution to the crisis in the country through the efforts to stop violence and terrorism. The ministry pointed out that the French role in support of violence and terrorism in Syria is a continuation of the legacy of some French colonialist governments which Syria has tried for decades since its independence to transcend. The ministry said that the former and current French governments have continued their blatant challenge of international law, the UN Charter and France's commitment as a permanent member of the UN Security Council through the various forms of support that has been offered to the armed terrorist gangs in Syria. The ministry added in its statement that in France's hosting of meetings for the Syrian armed men and those who support them on French territories, including the hosting of the so-called Revolutionary Civil Council meeting, which aims at consecrating the partitioning of Syria, undermining its sovereignty and territorial integrity and killing its citizens. The ministry said that the Syrian Arab Republic has tried to be calm in confronting this French intervention in its internal affairs that has been evident in statements that are made every day and several times by the spokesmen of the French presidency and the French foreign ministry and which reflect a lot of hatred, lies and fabrications regarding the events in Syria, not to speak of the French security system's attempts to make deals with terrorists and some neighboring states in order to ignite the situation in the country and undermine the Syrian state and its basic components. The ministry stressed that the Syrian people will not forgive France and other countries which encourage violence and terrorism in Syria and tighten the economic blockade on its people. Such crimes, the statement added, which are crimes against humanity, are usually brought to account by international law and constitute a flagrant violation of the Syrian sovereignty that the Syrian people have struggled in order to safeguard. Our armed forces continue to pursue terrorist groups who wreak havoc in the resort and the suburbs. They have killed a number of terrorists and injured others in Fuad, the Cinema Street, and Ajbaila, neighborhood in the city. Another army unit clashed with a terrorist group in Jnaina and the governorate suburbs, killing all the members of the groups and wounding others. 
An anti-terrorism squad arrested a terrorist who was hiding inside a terrorist hideout in the town of Sejar in Mharda, Hama countryside. The terrorists have developed communication device used to coordinate between the terrorist groups in and out of the governorate. In the Damascus suburbs, an army unit killed all the members of an armed terrorist group that spread panic among citizens and assaulted public and private properties near Al Thanawiya Square in Harasta. They confiscated all the weapons in their possession. Clashes were renewed in the Lebanese city of Tripoli, prompting a strong response from the Lebanese army. The Lebanese national media agency reported that clashes occurred in different areas in Tripoli, during which heavy artillery guns and machine guns were used. The agency added that schools were closed and many streets remained blocked because of snipers who are targeting cars and passers-by in the city. Nine Iraqis were killed and 23 others wounded in a terrorist attack in northern Baghdad today. An interior ministry source said that two people were killed and seven others injured when mortar rounds hit a Jakuk neighborhood north of Baghdad. In other attacks, three parked car bombs exploded simultaneously in separate areas in the northwestern neighborhood of Shula in Baghdad, killing seven people and injuring at least 11 others. With this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. For more information about Syria and the region, and if you want to see our bulletin again, you can visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Up next, the latest business of market news with Vani after a short break. Good afternoon. The Minister of Industry, Dr. Adnan al sukhni affirmed that the reason why some companies have stopped working and others have lost is due to some objective or personal reasons, stressing that the Ministry has a clear view for the coming period. This vision includes evaluating the performance of all the Ministry's establishments, while a successful company would be selected from each establishment as a model, in addition to an average and a losing company, and the reasons of success or loss would be examined, while taking into consideration the Ministry's plans and how these companies could be saved. The total losses in the general establishment for textile until the first half of this year approached 1 billion Syrian pounds. The manager of the establishment, Suhail Saeed, asserted that most of the companies were down as four companies and one factory stopped their production in Aleppo because of the difficulties in transportation. Moreover, Al Furat Spinning Company stopped its work too, whose losses were about 4.8 billion Syrian pounds. The Brent future slipped for a sixth day amid concerns about oil demand's growth. Due to an uncertain global economic outlook, but still above $109 per barrel, with the simmering tension in the Middle East, which helps stemming the slide, the Brent crude slipped 19 cents to become $109.25 per barrel. The European stock slipped for a third day as earning reports from some companies disappointed the investors. The U.S. index futures and Asian shares also retreated, whereas the Nikkei index rose to its highest level in four weeks in the early trading supported by gains of the exporting companies' shares. Carrot.
carat gold was at 3,575 Syrian pounds per gram, while the 18 carat gold was at 3,064 Syrian pounds per gram in the Damascus local market. Whereas the Jewelers Association has set the price of the Rashadi Golden Coin at 27,200 Syrian pounds and the English coin of 21 carats at 29,000 Syrian pounds, while the 22 carat coin at 30,300 Syrian pounds. The US dollar registered the highest level in three months against the Japanese yen during the early dealings of Asia, as the Japanese currency was under stress due to the increasing speculations that the Central Bank of Japan would widen its monetary stimulus next week. In the same context, the US dollar rose to its highest level since the beginning of last July, up by 0.1% above its level in the dealings of the New York market. And with this, we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.